Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Hello everybody and welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. So today I want to talk about something quite um, important to me because it was a, a very big part of my learn to fly journey which um, I would say I found quite negative because it, it led me to actually quit training several times. So let's take this scenario. So you've got the finances to fly once a month. Okay, now if, if that's you, I would strongly advise you to reconsider whether you start flight training now at all. And we're going to go into the reasons. So if you are flying once a month, let's take an average student. So an average student who's completing in a time frame of around 12 to 18 months um, is going to complete their training in around about 60 hours. That's the, the kind of national average at the moment. It's not to say that people don't pass in 45 hours, but they do. Um, yeah, people definitely pass in 45 hours, but the average student is 60 hours. To pass in 45 hours, the <clears throat> the kind of typical student who passes in 45 hours is somebody who's very determined, flies weekly, um, and they get through the course incredibly quickly. So if you're flying once a month, you can automatically say, that's not me, because you're flying once a month. Okay, so... The first problem with flying once a month is that you have a very low retention at that kind of um, pace as to how much of that lesson you can retain. So when you have a whole month off and then you go and fly again, the likelihood is that you're going to spend a large chunk of your lesson getting comfortable in the aeroplane for a start because... Obviously, you're learning to fly at the minute. Not everyone's comfortable with learning to fly to start off with. So you're getting used to just even flying in an aeroplane. And it's going to take you longer to adjust in the aircraft. So more of your time in your lesson is going to be is spent just adjusting to the fact that you're in flight again. Then you're trying to remember the things that you did in the last lesson. So in order that you can progress to a satisfactory standard, you can move on to the, the next exercise. So automatically, by flying once a month, you're, you're extending your training period without even realising it. Uh, and it's something that until you've kind of done that, you do not realise the impact of, of what you're doing. So going into that lesson, let's say it takes you 20 minutes just to get even comfortable in the aeroplane, you've got an hour lesson, um, you know, when you take off your taxi time either side, you know, that's going to take you down to about 50 minutes already. So let's say you've got half an hour of even productive time on, on your flying lesson, to be quite honest. Um, it's very difficult to feel like you're making any progress. And bearing in mind that most people aren't natural pilots. There's not that many people that come through to us that are actually naturally gifted at it you know it's there are people but in the main you know you don't know what you don't know so you're you're learning to fly that's the whole purpose you being here so flying once a month one of the biggest problems like i say is your ability to retain the information that you learnt um at the last lesson and then deploy that again on your your following lesson so you in, in a nutshell you always spend some time recouping you know, going over the, the um, previous lesson. So we said the average student takes 60 hours, you know, 12 to 18 months. Um, if you're flying once a month, bear in mind that the other factor in all of this is, is the weather. So we worked out that you will get across the year, it doesn't matter when you do it, by the way, just an average across the year, around about 40% 40, uh, 40 of your lessons will be cancelled due to weather. So if you factor that in as well, you know, how, how are you planning to deal with that? 
because if you're only booking one flight less than a month then it might be months before you fly so and you know this is all talking from bitter experience by the way so what i would say to you is if that's you you know a probably don't start at all that's seriously don't if you're doing once a month probably wait till the time's better you know whether you've got more time whether you've got more finance whatever it is but you're also going to need to think about this this weather problem so you're going to need to make contingency bookings so that if your lesson that you've planned for once a month doesn't go ahead then you can perhaps fly again a few weeks later and use that slot instead. But if you don't make any plans for contingency, it's just going to add months and months onto your training. You will literally expect up to 40% cancellation through weather. There is weather that you can fly in in commercial aircraft that is just not suitable uh, to fly in in a light aircraft in visual conditions. So we've kind of touched on the, the lack of retention um, there's this possibility and it's a really high possibility you're going to get up to 40% of your lessons cancelled through weather. So you're going to need to remain incredibly motivated to get through this course at this pace. You know, just t take it back to, um, you know, just like something you can relate to already in your life. So um, imagine you're, you've got a long journey to take and you're driving from, say, you're going down to the Midlands, down to the South Coast. You're on the motorway. Um, everyone does this. You you kind of count, you know, you see the signs, don't you, on the motorway, and you look at it and think, oh, all right, you know, only, only 50 miles to go. Then it's only 42 miles to go, and, and so on. You know, and you kind of do that with your flight training. You, you get different steps in your training, and you're kind of counting down, thinking, yeah, I'm getting towards the end of the course. I'm making some progress. But... If you're flying once a month, that progress is going to be so little that it's very difficult to even see the end of the course because it's a little bit like being stuck in a traffic jam on the motorway. You know, you've you've got 20 minutes into your journey. You know, you've still got 100 miles to go, but you're at standstill and you've been at standstill for 45 minutes. And all of a sudden, this journey that you thought, you know, might take you two hours, whatever it was going to be, all of a sudden, you just have no idea how long the journey is going to take and you sat there in your car thinking okay well if the traffic starts moving again then we might get another five miles at walking pace whatever it is um but it can kind of feel like that with your flight training you're stuck in this traffic jam you know you're not making any progress you're not moving forward the the distance between where you've got to go now and the end of your course is not getting any smaller and you just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel so for somebody who's doing it at this pace, it's, it's going to need some incredible amount of motivation um, to be able to get you through that because you're going to really struggle um, to see the end of the course at this point. It's, it's going to seem almost unattainable. And that's the reason why I gave up several times and in the end, doing it, you know, ended up doing it a little bit more intensively. Um, also, the other thing to... Um, to factor in is if you just do the simple maths <laughs> you know it's going to take you about five years <laughs> once a year so once a month to finish this course you know if you're doing it um at that pace so it it's just in my opinion it's, it's literally like the worst thing you could do you, you're you're so much more likely to give up on this course than you ever would be at any other you know kind of method you know you need to be flying much more intensively than that if you've got any hope of finishing the course. So it's all in the planning. You know, you, you really need to think about what you can budget, what you can afford to spend. And, you know, like I say, I, I'm not trying to put you off flying. I'm really not. You know, obviously I love flying. I want people to learn to fly, but I don't want to see people who can't afford it get into it or can't even, you know, maybe it's not the money, maybe it's the time. But you know, if you're doing once a month, you're in for a really, really long drawn out process. And more than that is, you know, you're going to add to the cost. So let's just look at the simple, um, the simple thing. So, you know, the average student 12 to 18 months is taking 60 hours. There's no way you're going to do it in 60 hours over, over the period you, you're planning to do it over. So, you know, maybe you want to add uh, 10, 20 hours to that. So there's more cost again. Second to that is inflation, certainly the highest we've seen in a long time. So, 
you know, you've got to factor that in as well. Each year you continue to train, you might want to be adding 10, 15% possibly onto your costs annually. So what your aircraft might have been one price this year, but it's going to be more expensive next year, I can guarantee you. And the year after that, it's going to be more expensive again. You know, things go up each year. So you're gradually adding more and more cost to your training by having more hours than you needed, by taking longer so the resources are costing more. Um, and what's more, you, things like your exams, you know, your exams have got an 18-month um time limit on them so if you let those run out which is pretty obvious that's going to happen um during that period you know that's more cost again to resit those exams you, you might not pass them again you might have to resit them again several times like you might have done in the first place you know all of these costs are now spiraling out of control um because of the time it's taking you to actually um finish the course and like i said the the most likely outcome, if I'm being pretty brutal about it, is you will not get through it, okay? Um, I've seen people who have done it, um, but at some point, like I did, you realise something needs to change. You know, something needs to change in order that you're going to get to the end of that course because you're just not making the progress. You, you're just not making the progress. And, and you know, if you, if you bring it to an, an analogy like... Um, with momentum you know with momentum comes results so it's you know it's harder to stop something moving when it's already in motion so you know if you roll a snowball down a hill you know it picks up momentum and it you know the snow sticks to it it compounds you know all that momentum compounds so people who tend to train more quickly all of that momentum's compounding because they're not forgetting the things they've learned you know, they're not spending time going over and over and over things to get it because they're flying so frequently, it just sticks. You know, their their skills are sticking like this snowball that's rolling down the hill, building momentum, building their knowledge. And what's more, they're not getting the lack of motivation, the frustration that comes with the lack of progress because they see the progress, they're feeling the progress, you know, they've been solo here, they've been solo on Nav Route 1, they've been solo on Nav Route 2, you know, they can see um, on a weekly basis usually that there's some level of significant progress and the only thing that holds them back really again is the weather but if you're flying frequently the weather's less of a problem because you've got more opportunity to fly as in you've got more bookings in to do it so you know momentum is a huge thing with learning to fly if you feel like there's no momentum it's harder to get unstuck you know it's harder to get the thing moving in the first place so all of these things generally lead to people quitting the course if you're doing it too slowly. It's the reality of it, I'm afraid. But let's look at what happens if you quit. You know, what's, what's the worst case that happens? So worst case is you've just wasted thousands of pounds on something that came to nothing. And most people haven't got thousands of pounds to waste. You know, maybe you have, but I still wouldn't recommend it. You know, you should always go into it with the... The vision that you're going to get to the end of it and if you're doing it over this kind of period of time I just don't see how you, you're going to do it I, I really don't you know I've, I've seen very few people do it at this kind of pace um, usually what will happen is part way through the course they'll realize that there's a problem they just can't foresee the end and they'll stop they'll quit but they'll come back later on when the time's better but that usually isn't very you know a very quick process it might be a few years before they come back and then what's happened you know a few years later down the line and i did this you know i i had probably <laughs> you know i'm probably the best example of this that i can think of um you know i made every mistake under the sun which is now why i'm involved in flying schools i like to try and help people not make those mistakes I and mean, it mainly it is in the planning so yeah, let's go back to what happened. So you come back a few years later. In your mind, you're probably thinking, oh, you know, two, three hours, I'll be back to the ability that I was a few years ago. Absolutely not. I can cast iron guarantee you that will not be the case. If you're just 10 hours behind where you were when you left, you know, you're doing well, right? Because it's a perishable skill. You know, you don't 
retain all of this stuff like you didn't retain that knowledge you were you were keeping between or trying to keep between your once a month flying lessons so you come back and you're going to be starting from pretty much scratch depending on how many hours you've got and then all of that time that you logged in your logbook okay it's there for experience and you won't waste all of it guaranteed you know but the majority of it counts for nothing you know and then comes the cost because you're having to spend more money on more hours so the, the purpose of this podcast was to talk about why flying once a month is a really bad idea and there's a whole shopping list of reasons there why i think it's a bad idea now you know if it if you start off like that because you know times are going to be better and you you've made a plan to fly more frequently later on then so be it but you know if you go into a flying school and you tell them you can only do it once a month and they're happy for you to keep doing that, you know, I don't think you're getting the best advice. I really don't. Um, I try and tell all of our students, please, please don't do this unless you can foresee in the very short term future there's going to be some improvement in your availability or finances because you are literally wasting your time and your money. OK, so it's not to, not to be negative. I'm just trying to give you some good advice. But, you know, like I said before, the... The momentum is the key to it. And when you get that momentum, you see you're going places, it's starting to stick. You know, all of a sudden, becoming a private pilot, um, you know, it isn't isn't that much of a big deal. You can get there. Um, but you've got to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just not going to work for you. So I hope you find this helpful anyway. Um, only a short one, really, but it, it was something personal to me. And um, I know there's a few people out there it probably relates to. So if you're that student like I was, you, you're there, you're not making the progress, you're feeling demotivated, you can't see the end, um, I've got a gift for you, okay? In fact, I've got two gifts for you. First one is our free Learn to Fly guide. So if you go onto our website, almat.co.uk, go to the free stuff section, and go on to our free learn to fly guide that is going to go through everything you need to know about learning to fly up to ppl or lapel stage okay now you might be thinking oh i don't need that i'm already part way through my flight training trust me you'll learn something from it um, there is no end of people that we take on from other schools who haven't had the right information in the first place they barely know what they're getting themselves into so please go and get that <clears throat> the free learn to fly guide it's in the free stuff section almat.co.uk and the second thing i'm going to give you if you're looking to um, learn to fly in the next six months or perhaps you're at another school at the minute you're you're feeling like the progress isn't there um you're feeling uncomfortable it's not working for you i'm going to offer you a free consultation Okay, and in that free consultation, we can talk through where you're currently at, where you need to get to, and how we can help you get there in a much more efficient manner. Okay, so there's my two free gifts for you. So go on to almat.co.uk, free stuff section, get your free learn to fly guide, read through that. You'll be prompted to book a consultation anyway in the email you receive when it comes through. But when you've read through that, if you're either looking to move schools at the moment because you're frustrated with the progress you've got or you're looking to start your training in six months or less, then please take me up on that free consultation and I'm going to impart a wealth of knowledge on you which is going to help you get to where you need to go. Okay, hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and see you on the next one. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode. 